Well, we had about 15 dozen eggs uh, extra. And sometimes we have extra. And for those of you that want eggs, I know we don't sell them on the website, but we do sell them with our shares. And if you want to pick up at the farm, we usually have them. But the pigs are taking advantage of these multiple dozen eggs. And they love it. That's what you do with eggs that are just a little bit older, but still good. And they love them. So, let's see, they love their eggs. They eat the shells, they eat the yolks, they eat it all. These are protein machines. <laughs> anyway, that's what we got tonight. There's those guinea hens. A lot of people don't like the guinea hens, but we do. I know they're loud, and, but I tell you what, they keep a lot of predators away from us. And they keep those ticks away too. So that's a good day. So um, where are we? Where are we picking up? We're picking up today. We had a crazy day. Our dog Gunner, the blonde that we have, big old 140 pound dog, decided to run out in the street in front of a truck. So he got hit earlier today, bruised his back leg pretty good. And we brought him to the vet to make sure there's no internal issues and things like that. And man, he lucked out and it was one of the town guys that hit him. And thank God he stopped and told us. And you know, he was really bummed out, but there's these guys. So I, I'm gonna make this announcement early for anybody that's looking for pigs. Um, we're gonna be selling some of our live pigs and I'll tell you why. We have so many of them that we never sell pigs like this size. You know, about 100 pounds, 125 pounds. We don't usually sell a lot of them, but we're gonna sell some of these. So if you're looking for pigs, reach out to us. You can, uh, I guess I'll put a link down below to the website and you can, uh, you know, get a little pig for your own and grow it out and do, do what you do. But these are really nice pigs. So. We got this size and then we also have piglets that we're going to be uh, selling uh, as well. So we made a decision that said, look, we have so many pigs that it's almost not fair to have this many pigs because we can't, um, with our facilities, I guess you could say, we can't like currently handle more pigs, right? Like this, this big guy here, he's unfortunately going to be heading to the butcher soon. Um, but we can't we just can't handle all the pigs. So that's the bottom line What we realize is my gosh these pigs grow fast and they grow fast and before you know it You got 200 pigs now we go through a lot of pork and we process a lot of pigs for sure But we're just not growing them fast enough. They do take time to grow several months six months um, So we keep we're just not turning them as fast as we would like in terms of we're growing them as fast as we would like so we keep them all on a nice clean diet and and this, that, and the other thing. So we're, uh, you know, we're hoping that they can continue to grow. And like I said, we've had to make some good decisions here over the last couple of weeks. I've tried to keep everybody here in, uh, on board with, with our decision making here on this channel. And one of the biggest things that we've been doing is sharpening our pencil and going over all of our numbers. Because now that we've, we've been doing this for a while, we're starting to ask, you know, uh, I'd say better questions, right? Like what's it costing us to actually take a pig from start to finish? What's it costing us in feed per year based on the amount of pigs that we have? What's our, <clears throat> what's our hay cost based on this herd size? And that again is moving us into a place where we have to make some educated decisions as a, you know, as a farm thinking about, you know, fiscal responsibility and financial responsibility for today you know, without forgetting what it is that we're, we're trying to do tomorrow, you know? So, you know, our, our cow herd is, is definitely big, um, you know, that with the calves this year, I mean, we're approaching probably 140, 150 cows out there. So, so it's a big herd. Um, the problem is, although it's big, you know, we don't have the land to support it all. And then, you know, we have about 15 more out there that we're going to process this year. So that say takes us down to uh, 135. And then we were thinking, well, maybe we should just sell in the marketplace 35, um, 35 cows. So that brings us down to 100. 
And then you start saying, well, well, if we're at a hundred, what would our hay cost be? And what if we went from a hundred down to 65, right? And took advantage of, of the markets that are out there today. And, and again, all that thought process, it, it, it makes you think. And the one thing that we never want to do here is retreat in any way. So we don't want to play defense, but we want to play a smart offense. And the smart offense says, look, you got to know your numbers. You got to know what's going on. You got to understand markets and you have to make decisions accordingly. And that's where we're at now. You know, what's our, what are we, what are we earning from our, our pig crop, you know, annually? And what's it costing us to raise that crop, you know, from our cattle crop? What are we, what, what are we earning? And what are we, um, and, and what are we, what's our, what's our overall cost? So it's just doing a, a simple cost analysis and, and such. And, you know, that's one thing that we've worked hard at and tried to find really good help on the bookkeeping side and, uh, accounting side and, you know, I think this year will be a breakthrough year for us. You know, if we can just lock down on really good bookkeeping and strategic bookkeeping to uh, categorize each part of the farm. You know, what's the pig feed costing? What's the chicken feed costing? What's the hay costing? What's the mineral costing? And silo everything by species. And then um, we would have a good idea as to what's what and what everything what everything costs because you know anybody that, that that spends time on a farm has worked on a farm has had animals of their own you know that it could very quickly escalate financially um, as your uh, as the amount of animals you have on your farm begins to elevate you have to make sure that that ratio of sales to uh, to animals grows uh, grows appropriately so just something to uh you know something to think about here as we uh walk down the highway over here um anyway uh i've never seen a more active country road in my entire life you see i'm getting yelled at for being in the road it's not a road it's a highway we we decided to find the only farm in in a country location that is uh basically a highway so we live on a highway in a residential on a residential road the traffic count is like nothing you've ever seen before and it starts at like 4 30 in the morning and goes to like eight o'clock at night so anyway if you, when you guys are considering buying a farm <clears throat> don't be totally seduced by just the views spend a little time knowing what your traffic count is and then maybe your dogs won't get smoked but Anyway, that's that's what we got. So uh, you can kind of see that wood in there. We're building a long style outdoor feeder as well. Because we have so many pigs, we want to make sure that each pig uh, doesn't have to compete with the other for feed. So that's something that we're focused on as well. All right, I'm going to continue my walk. And by the way, it is getting cold out here. It's, it's August, what is it, August 8th, August 9th, August 8th? Probably put this out for August 8th, August 9th. But it's chilly tonight. It's like the first feeling of that like fall rawness. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying that, but you can see our chicken tractors out there. One, two, three, four, five. There's, there's actually six of them out there filled with chickens and we're a little worried because there's supposed to be a lot of rain and flooding coming up the coast um, the next day or so so we're hoping the chickens can handle it it's uh you know it's brutal but we do our best yeah ideally you can see the that this this pasture kind of goes on an angle here ideally you'd want to find a pasture you know for uh for running chickens that's totally flat and you know, this is flatter, but we need it for the cattle. So we're, we're just not in a position to, uh, you know, to give it up. So that's uh, that's the rundown on the chickens. We got turkeys in, the turkey poults are in. We've lost uh, crazy enough when we first got them. We had 200 and we lost 195 of the 200. 195 dead on arrival. So that was not good. Um, so we ended up calling the company. They did a great job replacing.
replacing them the next day. And, and we got our, our 200 turkeys. Everybody's really excited that their, uh, that their turkeys are they're, they're here. Now we just got to keep them alive. And I'll say uh, turkeys, the first week or so to 10 days, sometimes upwards of two weeks, can be difficult to raise because they don't, um, they don't know to drink. And, you know, they just, they're just weird. I guess that's the best way to say it. They don't know what they're doing early in their life. So you got to teach them. You got to get them going. And once they get going, they're fine. Some people say it's best to put a chicken chick with them. We just didn't have any chicken chicks to put in there to teach them how to, you know, how to drink and how to, and how to eat and how to survive on their own. So we lost five more today, which, which was sucky. So I think now we're back to the 200 marker and we're just going to do 200 um, Thanksgiving turkeys this year and that'll be it. That is, you want to see me at my worst, come up here when we're shipping turkeys. It is the real deal, holy field. Uh, stress, we're running up against the clock. We're trying to pray to God that UPS doesn't lose a turkey. We're so thankful for people that come and pick up their turkeys. Anyway, that's the drill and that's the deal. So. We, uh, I don't know why we do this to ourselves. You know, we could, we could do this without the strain, but I guess you got to earn your stripes in this world. So we, so we do the turkeys. Um, they're very expensive to raise. They take 16 weeks to raise. Um, but we do it because our customers value it. And even if it's a break even for us, or you make just a couple bucks, you know, it's it's nice to be the talk of the customer's table and they feel really good to know like, hey, we got a turkey right off the farm and and we feel really good about it. And it's a great uh, it's a great talking um, talking point. So that makes us feel really good. And what else? What else do we have? We got Freedom Fest, which is our big fall party, September 14th. I'll put a link down below. I hope you guys can make it. It's 100 percent free outside of the ice cream truck. We do a pig roast, cook all our own meats. It's really a great day. Uh, we're pumped about that. And yeah, that's that's just what we got. We got a lot going on. We're, uh, we're in the process of hiring a manager to uh, help us with the shipping and the distribution to try to speed things up and clean things up and uh, just get better and better because you know, Lauren and I, we've taken on all of this ourselves for the most part. So we're working like seven days a week, round the clock. And it is, it's a lot, you know, and I come from sports where it's all day, every day, but you get an off season. This is all day, every day with no off season. So it's a whole different game. So tip your cap to your farmers because they're all getting after it out there, which is, which is super good. And uh, yeah, so Again, we're, we're feeling good about the, the health of the animals. We're, we're managing the pasture well, considering the amount that we have, the amount of pasture we have, the amount of cows that we have. We're supplementing right now with two bales of hay a day. And, uh, you know, not that we want to be burning two hay bales a day and burning diesel fuel, but right now that's the deal. And you can see I'm walking here to show you how many cows are out here. And I, I would love to keep them all. But unfortunately, that's not what this, uh, that's not what this business is of, of raising cattle. And you gotta look for the best genetics. You gotta see who's growing well. You gotta see who's not growing well. And as Greg Judy says, you get them off your grass if they're not growing well, because they're not growing well and they're eating grass that others could use. So anyway, you could also see that beautiful brindle coat with that stripe on the back. He is growing really nice. That's a steer. We steered him a couple months ago. He had a rectal prolapse. He had, what else did he have? He had an issue with his castration. But anyway, he's a warrior and he's doing good. So um, yeah, we're happy with what we got. But again, we will, uh, we'll, we'll trim this up and see what we can, uh, see what we ac we can accomplish here either in private sale or um taking advantage of some of the rail pricing and auction pricing that's out there the other thing too we got to go through our mom cows and make sure 
you know, who's bred, who got bred back, who's going to be bred and make sure that the moms are producing as well uh, for us. So that's my, uh, that's my spiel. And this guy's interesting too. You know, I told you I, the good, the bad and the ugly, but this guy's got some warts that we're treating on him, this black white face. So he may be one of those uh, that, that heads on out, but it's just topical. It's no issue. We're just kind of treating those as, as they are. And this is one we will not be sending out. You look at that black Angus right there. Good body on him. Good solid body. He just, not the one in front, but the one in back. Nice flat back. So, all right, everybody. That's what I got. That's the, that's the spiel. That's the rundown. That's the shindig, as Joel Salatin would say. And I hope you in, uh, I hope you ha all have a great day. I hope you have a great night. I hope you have a great life. And I hope you uh, remember that time is fleeting and take advantage of the time that you have because it's fleeting and uh, you can't buy it back. No matter how rich you are, the one thing you can't buy back is time. So make sure that you, uh, you treat your time wisely and you spend your time wisely with the people that you want to spend it with and the people you don't want to spend it with well, don't spend it with them. All right, everybody. I hope to see you at Freedom Fest this year. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a subscribe. Give us uh, your comments down below, and we look forward to them. And I hope everybody's doing great. See ya.